I'm in Ilkeston, which lies between Nottingham and Derby, to look at a house guided at just £38,000. So, what does £38,000 buy you when it comes to property these days? Well, in certain parts of the country, still quite a lot. I'm in Ilkeston in Derbyshire, in Green Lane to be precise, where up for auction was an older style semi-detached, two up, two down, but with that amazing guide price of just 38000 quid. Some may say shabby chic is a good look, but this is just plain shabby. It needs a lick of paint and it needs it quick. <laughs> well, that's an interesting little front room. Very odd layout indeed. Straight through the front door. That's obviously stairs up to the bedrooms. Um, down this other step into what is, I guess, yeah, it's the front living room area. Odd, 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 very small. It's good to see that it's got the real fire though. And then through into the rear sort of sitting room, slightly bigger space, which is good to see. Under stairs cupboard, you know, any kind of storage in a house this size is really good to have. Another open fire. Um, it doesn't look in too bad a condition. However, it gets really bad when you come out here. <laughs> look at the size of the kitchen. Absolutely tiny. This is an extension onto the original two up, two down, uh, but clearly in need of, um, a bit of tender loving care for sure. So good news up here, two reasonable sized bedrooms, but more importantly from my point of view is that there's already a loo. So one of the issues that you might have, loo being downstairs has actually been sorted out for you. That's great. Rooms themselves a bit pokey to be honest. And uh, well, clearly someone's had a bit of a, a go at putting in a new loft access uh, and not made a very good job of it. But all in all, when it is what it is, it's a two up, two down. Not only is there damage to the ceilings, there are also signs that the central heating system doesn't work. And on closer inspection of the bathroom, it seems there's an other issue there. Well, I'm not going to give you your property problems spotter's badge for noticing that. It is fairly obvious. In the bathroom here, serious problems with the roof, causing all sorts of water ingress, etc. Now, I don't think it's a major issue. Uh, it looks to me, quite simply, that there isn't any felt under the tiles. So you are going to have to think about putting a new roof on at some stage, and that ain't going to be cheap. Up on the roof. Up on the roof. So the main problem here is up on the roof. With the rest of the general upgrade that needs to be done, I'm concerned that although guided at 38,000, there might be a ceiling price for this type of property. Well, you don't get much for £38,000 these days, but I don't know, I think this house possibly contradicts that because you are getting a nice little house. Yes, it does have some issues. You're going to have to spend some money on the roof and certainly get your solicitor to check out the rights of access. But let's find out what it did actually sell for at the auction. Lot 89 is number 11, Green Lane in Ilkeston. 35 to start me, 35 in two places, at 35,000 pounds. 36 I spotted in the middle, thank you, 36. 50 is bid, at 50,000, going once, going twice, under half, 51. You're going to let him have it this time. £50,500, all done. Once, twice, and 51. Fresh bidder. 51. He knows when to come in. 51 and a half. 51 and a half. 51 it is. Any higher bid. All done. Once, twice, third chance. Sold at 51. The shrewd bidder who came in with that £51,000 bid right at the end of the auction is local businessman Ian. Ian, congratulations. Hi, thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and you. Well done. Um, why did you want to buy this house? Um, to be fair, it fits in with our portfolio of, of uh, our rented properties. So tell me about your portfolio. I mean, big, small? I've got 20 properties altogether. Oh. And we've got another six on the go. Um, got another one up the road that we've just about finished. Got four apartments that we've just started. And then uh, we'll pull this one in as well. This is property number 26 for Ian. But this isn't his full-time career. He started out as an apprentice bricklayer and is still in construction. He now runs a company providing bricklayers to builders and his current project is to supply them for building schools. So when you're buying properties to fit into your strategy, what do you look for? 
I, I, I look for properties within about five or ten minutes of where I live. Right. That, 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 a guy told me that a few years ago. That means when I'm going to work, going shopping or somewhere, I just drive by and make sure that it's OK, that it's not been burnt down or anything, you know. <laughs> so it's just keeping an eye on things, that's all. And, and basically, it's, it's knowing your market. You know that there's plenty of people around here that need the housing, that, uh, that, can't, that perhaps can't afford to buy at the moment because, because of the credit crunch, so they've got to rent. So I, I know this market here inside out. Every time you pick up a paper or turn on the TV or radio, there seems to be doom and gloom in the housing industry. But Ian has a refreshing take on it. To me, it's an opportunity. If you've got the cash, which is what we've purchased this with, is, is go in and buy it. And uh, 51,000, it's, it's great value. Uh, our budget for doing this uh, property up will be around about 10,000. So I'll, I'll get this all done for about 60, 61. It's, it's fantastic value at the moment. And you're not worried about potential drops in the future of prices? They will go up over time. Short term, might struggle, might even lose a bit. But long term, they will go up. I have no worries whatsoever. And I agree completely with Ian. Right now, it might not be a place to make a fast buck, but if you can have a long-term strategy like him, you should be all right. Ian doesn't take too many chances. He chooses the properties he buys carefully. Then he makes sure they're renovated and earning money as soon as possible. So will you actually physically be doing the work or, or will you be bringing other people in? No, um, what will happen, I will put a project manager in charge of this project. All our jobs are run on programmes. He, he will be issued with a programme, so he'll know which date to bring each subcontract to in, which, which is very important. As one finishes, another one will be starting. He will be allotted four weeks and that's how we will run it, regimentally. The man entrusted with keeping all the troops in line and to project manage this particular refurbishment is Pete. Pete, you're the man who's <laughs> going to take on this project. Uh, how, are you, how are you going to start? What, what's the first job? I think we'll need a new roof. Uh, do all that. Check all the windows. They'll be taken out, replaced. A lot of ceilings have damaged because we've got water damage. Uh, they'll be done. Uh, heating have to be replaced. Lights will have to be checked. So nothing too daunting then, really? No. It's in quite good condition, actually. I, I, I didn't think it would be inside, but it's, it's not bad, actually. So how long have you worked with Ian? I've been working with Ian about 10 years now. Very nice, very nice gaffer, actually. <laughs> good boss. ups and downs, but we get there in the end. People like Pete are key to Ian's success. Another seems to be his flexibility, and he's not one to pass up an opportunity. I love, I love the quirky projects. Uh, I've just come back from Iceland. Iceland? Yes, in Iceland. There's only two bricklayers, and one of them mainly does plumbing. <laughs> Iceland only has two bricklayers? Yes, yeah. So, so when we went up there, it made four. <laughs> what do they make their hands out of? Wood? No, concrete, concrete mainly, and wrinkly tin. Wrinkly tin roofs, not tiles, it's all steel. Right. So, you seem to still retain a lot of enthusiasm for oh, what yeah. you do. Yeah, I am. I'm, a, I'm absolutely bubbling with it. Yeah, I love my work. I really do. And uh, I, I'm, it's just another challenge, and I'll keep on going. In the current climate, he might find that the Icelandic work will freeze up. But I doubt that will worry him too much. He's just one chilled out geezer. Well, there you go, Ian telling you exactly what you need to know if you want to become a property investor. He's buying close to where he lives, he's buying the kind of properties that he knows there's a rental market for, and he's being very strict about his budget. Heed his words well, and you too could do really well. How will he get on? Find out later in the show.